Hello there, my name's Ewan, and as you're probably aware, I am a self-confessed astronomy addict. Today I'd like to talk to you about the modification that I've made to my uh, rather nice ZWO ASI 178 MC colour camera. Uh, I've put a Peltier cooler on it. The design is essentially the same as the one that was originally provided by Martin from Astronomy for Beginners and you can find his video at this address tinyurl.com forward slash Martin Peltier. Got that? Okay and the reason that's important is because I'm not going to repeat all the stuff that he's already done in his video. There's no point. It's it's already out there, he's already designed it, he should get the credit for the original design. All I'm going to do is run you through a few modifications that I've made to uh, the design that I've found have worked for me, uh, and they're mainly inspired by the, the things that Martin has mentioned didn't work very well on his cooler. I've tested this and I've managed to drop the sensor temperature uh, by between 9 and 10 degrees. Uh, the external temperature on the camera I've managed to get down to minus 1.7 degrees which was a little bit worrying at the time. Turns out absolutely fantastic, not a problem at all because the modifications that I've made over Martin's original design have actually, I think, probably helped stop a problem that you can get with dewing. Let me run you through the details. Okay, now one of the first changes that I made over Martin's design was I actually moved the control box into a separate little container and put it on a very long cable. As you can see on here, I've got a piece of the uh, uh, Velcro type stuff that you can buy now, the, the, the Conqueror wall mounting doesn't live a mark stuff, um, which is perfectly okay. I find it a bit of a, a, a bind putting it on and off all the time. Uh, so this normally just stays on the uh, the mount. It's, it's literally just attached to the side of the mount, but it means that then I'm not going anywhere near the camera or the telescope when I want to make any changes to the temperature that I've set for the scope to go to. Okay, now all I've got here is a bog standard little uh, temperature controller, uh, similar to the one that Martin had in his video. Mine's got a little black rim around it and buttons here instead of the three buttons that his has down the bottom. Uh, it, I just preferred this one, doesn't make any real difference. Big problem I had with it though, that with this though, is that the uh, the desired temperature down the bottom here is very, very bright blue. So what I've done is I've got a piece of red acetate, cut it to be very slightly larger than necessary, as you can see here, and just poked it in around the edge so that you can still read the figures here. They just don't shine out like they uh, they were doing originally. This next change that I made is because I am probably the world's worst at soldering. If I'm not the world's worst, I'm a very, very close second. These little plastic clips here allow you to make a parallel circuit without actually having to do all the soldering that Martin was doing. He mentioned in his video about having clips that go together and that's basically all this really is. It's just that instead of you having to clip everything together and making sure everything's in the right place and such, you just literally take your wire, poke it in, close the little blue catch and it's solid on there. The uh, switch at the back here it's everything screwed into place and I even managed to make some little extension wires for the temperature sensor. Now this cable here, this grey cable, uh, you'll see that I have got the temperature sensor here on 
yellow and green. I've got a blue and a red, positive and negative. And I've got an orange and a black, positive and negative. Uh, so it's just colour coding so that when I get to the control box at the other end, I can make sure that I connect everything up correctly. Now, one big important factor here is that the red and blue wires are actually for the fan at the other end. And you'll notice that they completely bypass the temperature control. Now, the reason I did that is that I wanted to make sure that the temperature control was going to uh, affect the Peltier but not turn the fan off. When you look at this I, I have done everything I can to suppress vibrations but what I didn't want is the sudden acceleration and deceleration of the fan to cause a bit of a twisting motion so by having the fan on constantly at the con constant speed I don't have to worry about that. Now let's move on to the second control box I'm just going to pause this for a moment Okay, now here is the secondary box, and it serves one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to protect where I've joined all the wires together. As you can see here, this is the, uh, the temperature sensor that goes all the way around to here, and it's connected to the yellow and green wires, as before, just to show you there, moving over where the orange one. And all I've done is I've twisted them together, I've put tape around them and made sure that they are all as secure as I can possibly make them. And then put them in this little black box which is attached to the aluminium sheet. Come to the aluminium sheet in a moment. Uh, but you can see it is just literally, if I turn it over here. A little bolt straight through the box okay that allows for the box to move so you can twist around so it's not actually stuck rigid and gonna cause problems that way uh, but it does provide the protection that you need for all of your wiring so that you're not going to get any liquid and bits and pieces getting in there okay so as I said you don't necessarily need that second box I just thought it made everything look tidy and added an extra layer of protection and now let's move on to the Peltier design itself. One other quick thing I just wanted to mention is that um, here we have the uh, what would normally be the infrared cut filter for this particular camera. Uh, I believe you have the similar thing in the ASI 120. Uh, it's in the ASO 178 and I'm pretty sure the 1600 as well. But the only one I think that doesn't have it is the 200 series. Um, is it the 224 or something? Uh, I don't believe that that has an IR cut filter and it has just a plain piece, piece of glass. What I've done is I've replaced the original uh, filter with a plain piece of glass. This is uh, actually... Uh, purchased from eBay, it's a watch face glass. It's completely flat with a very slightly beveled edge. And the advantage of this over the IR cut filter is that you're not cutting out any of the light. And secondly, you can do this with it. Box standard, glasses cleaning cloth. And there you go. Now, would you really want to do that to the nice filter glass that's uh, supplied with your, your camera? No, you wouldn't. I do still have somewhere the original uh, glass filter. Bear with me one moment. I'll quickly go and grab it. It's in with my filter for my DSLR because that seems about the safest place to keep it. I'm still here, hope you're still here. Still here, still going. Don't switch off. I'm back. EOS clip filter. Open it up. 
There's my EOS filter in the little bag. There's the IR cut filter. You can see that it, it does actually have a different sheen to it than the normal glass, as you can see there, which is now perfectly clean. And that's easy to get to because it's literally just one thing to unscrew, or well, in this case, screw back up because I'm putting it together again. And then you know it is. All done. Camera back together. Right, onto the Peltier itself. You can see in there the white of the Peltier chip. And you can see just there as well a little white screw. What that is, is that's a nylon bolt. The ASI series of cameras uh, all have the same basic body and there's a 39 millimeter gap between the M4 holes that are provided on the camera itself so what I did was I got some nylon M4 bolts that I could use to attach my aluminium sheet to the camera very important because when you heat up and cool down metal, it expands and contracts and expands and contracts and changes shape and changes size and all that sort of thing. And you'd be doing that to the bolts, to the aluminium, to the heat sink and everything like that. And what you end up with is bolts that bind and you can cause some serious damage to the casing of your camera when you undo those. These nylon bolts are a hell of a lot weaker than uh, the normal bolts, normal metal bolts that you get, in that they will quite happily um, break their thread before you break the camera. Still absolutely solid for holding everything in place. You can see I'm not playing here, I'm actually trying to pull the thing apart and it's not moving. Okay, so they're perfectly solid, perfectly capable of holding everything in place. The Peltier is the same as Martin's was using, Martin was using, sorry, but um, what I've done is I've gone for a much bigger um, cooling system. So it is still just a computer fan and a heat sink. But being larger, you can't just bolt it straight on the way Martin did. So what I've done is where he had a very small heat sink underneath the Peltier, I've put an aluminium sheet. Not only does it provide uh, the heat sink effect that you want on the cold side of the Peltier chip, but it also gives you a nice platform to attach everything to. You can see here that what I've done as well is I've used three little rubber washers there, one there and one there. I've done that on each corner. And because of that, it's suppressed any vibration you get from the fan. When the fan is going, none of it gets through to the nose piece. And none of it gets through to the sensor. The only thing that's getting through to the sensor is the cold coming through from the cold side of the Peltier. So it's done exactly what I needed it to do. Now what I'm doing as well is I'm sensing the temperature of the aluminium sheet USB 3 so this feeds back into my laptop and I'm using sharp cap on the long exposure mode to take my deep sky pictures and that actually returns information about the sensor temperature and when you save your files it actually records that information on the files as well so I know exactly how hot or cold my sensor is. What I don't know is how hot or cold the aluminium is getting. And as I said, I got it to minus 1.7 degrees and I was worried that I was gonna have a problem with dew. What I actually had was ice forming all over the aluminium sheet and a very small amount of dew on the outside of 
the case here. Sensor absolutely clear. As you can see, having just cleaned it with a normal glasses cloth, it's perfectly clean as well. Okay, the sensor itself is protected behind the glass, so you don't even have to worry if there was going to be a problem with the dew buildup on the front coming through from your scope, because I use a Newtonian scope, so it's open at the front. Um, if there was going to be a problem with the dew buildup on the front, it would actually build up on the glass and not on your sensor. So you're not going to damage any of the expensive electronics in your camera. So there we have it. I've made some changes i've made some improvements um i've learned from what martin's done and i think i've been fairly successful i hope you like the vid let me just turn this around and i'll uh, i'll talk to you again face to face hello again i did just want to very quickly show you the peltier actually working so i've got my trusty 12 volt power supply and the 12 volt plug for the cooler itself and uh, what we'll do is I'll just hold the device here and you will see that as soon as I plug it in the fan will start ready okay all off and going and running let's just pick up the temperature control sensor and here you can see it's currently uh, the target temperature is set to minus 3.0 degrees the reason i did that is because it seemed about right for for getting the temperature down um, without going too far and here we go you can see we were on 19 degrees we're already uh, on the again external temperature not internal on the external temperature we're already down below 17 degrees. It's, it's so fast. So, so fast. And there's no vibration. All you can hear is the fan. Yep, just a bit of fan noise. Nothing else. That's it. 14.5. Pretty good. Uh, oh, and the camera's getting particularly cold as well. Um, it does get really really quite chilly after a while it's a fantastic mod it's uh, a great design um, the one thing I like about the way that I've done the change is that you can just bolt up from the bottom onto the uh, the heat sink and bolt your fan into the heat sink from the top so everything is attached to your aluminium sheet rather than your camera you can pull this whole thing apart you can undo the bolts, you can undo the nylon bolts on there, and what you end up with, oh, just struck me, power supply, what you end up with is a completely unmodified, untouched camera. It's as if you'd never done anything to it. So you don't have to worry about the fact that, oh, I might be damaging the camera, I might be damaging the warranty, anything like that. Don't know whether it affects the warranty. Personally, don't care. Happy with the modification, happy that it's a, a safe thing to do. You're bolting something on the back. It's like bolting something on the front. You're not exactly changing anything on it. 11 degrees. And that's with my hand touching it. So it's picking up the heat from my hand as well. Blah. I think it's brilliant. I love it. Um, and the difference it makes to your photographs. You can see on the Astronomy for Beginners uh, pages on Facebook. And I'll also pop some of them up on my personal blog. This is a well worthwhile modification doing if you use a ZWO ASI camera. Total cost, maybe 20 quid. Cost of the cooled version of this camera, 700. Ouch. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.